when she got to the club, she kind of felt awkward, but men were still reaching for her. Girl, don't be impressed. Men will reach for a dog at the end of the night. Girl, don't you know the closer you get to the end of the night, the more them niggas start grabbing? <laughs> And my YouTube love bugs, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of my Patreon book club, please remember to hit the link below. And for a $5 monthly fee, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before YouTube gets it, if YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about Corinne Steffens, Confessions of a Video Vixen, part six. So anyway, where we left off, wait, 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 before we go forward. So you know how I was calling the girl Kern, okay, but her name is Corinne, okay. Then I called the girl Yvette, but her name is Yvette. Her stripper name is Yvette. Santiago, and somebody pointed out to me that the little girl from the coldest winter ever was Winter Santiago. I said, let me find out this bitch that stole the whole azuge from the coldest winter ever, but I digress. Anyway, her name is Yvette, not Yvette. Please forgive me, because I be messing up. You know my brain ain't exactly sober. Anyway, where we left off, Yvette, meaning Kern, Corinne was on the phone with the girl Ashley, okay? That's his new secret lover down there to the New York, okay? And what she said was when Ashley gave uh, the champ, meaning Coogee Rap, the phone, he said the same thing that, you know, you expect him to say, bitch, what the fuck you want, okay? I don't care about you. Stop calling me and my new woman. And what she said, you know, he on the phone cussing her out, telling her everything negative and demeaning, you know, she absorbing everything. And I'm saying to myself, how you gonna let a ninja like this tell you that something wrong with you? Have you seen Coogee Rap? Have you seen him? Even when he was young, he wasn't that attractive. How you gonna let a barilla tell you that you ugly? She said eventually, you know, because she was broke, that was the reason why she was hunting for his ass. Eventually, one of the champ's friends came by and gave her a couple of hundred so that she can get groceries, pay a couple of bills, and keep things going. So and what uh, Yzet, i.e. Kern, Superhead. That bitch got a thousand names, okay? Then, listen, I just found out that she said that the name Corinne Steffens was even a fake name. I said, what? This bitch, this bitch right here is a whole, I don't even know. I don't even know. She said that was a character. What is the bitch name? She hey. said by the time that G returned from New York, their son was one years old. She said that he missed his first words, him talking, his first birthday party. She said he missed everything. Girl, he don't care. He don't care. If he cared, he would have been there. Well, as usual, he came home, burned gifts. Okay? And because he was being nice, he just decided to give her $3,500 to help her move. She said that that was what she needed so that she could move along with her life and move the hell out. And she waited on the $3,500. That nigga continued to talk to her like she was doo-doo. After a okay. while, he moved his ex in, okay? Not the one who was crying for her, but another ex that did not like her. So even though they had two extra bedrooms on the top floor, the ex-girlfriend and their son slept on the couch or on the floor in the living room. I'm saying to myself, do y'all look at this nigga? Have y'all seen him? What the hell? How the hell? He must got the best. Hmm. In the world. Girl, that even could, that, that, you know, I have been a fool for, you know, that. 
you know, hence why I'm here in Atlanta. But he got a girl in New York, that's Ashley. He got his ex-girlfriend slash baby mother and son sleeping on the couch in the living room. And he got Corinne Steffen, Steffens, or whatever the bitch name is, upstairs with their son. And okay. the only way that she was able to come down was if it was to do some of his bidding, okay? She couldn't come out the house for nothing or come downstairs for nothing. Her just said she just tried to avoid both of them at all costs, okay? She said at the time, G wasn't putting his hands on her, but he continuously called her ugly. Mm -hmm. Three weeks later and no $3,500, but he gave her a thousand. After she bought all the necessities to travel with, all she had was $800. Now she packed up her stuff, okay, and hid her bags and called a friend the day that she decided to, you know, steal away in the night, okay? So what she did, she waited for the Negro to come get in the bed with her, plop, he did. She waited to hear the snoring, you know, girl, that's what we all do. We wait to hear the snoring, you know, because as soon as my wife snore, I'll be out here trying to get snacks and stuff because we all supposed to be on a diet. But she waited to hear the snoring. She got up, got her bags, went, got her baby, and snuck outside to the friend car who took her to the airport. She said she knew that that was the end of that relationship. Good for you. If you do what you got to do, girl, do whatever it is you need to do to make you home. So any break, you know, she had a whole plan together, child. She wasn't just going to run away in the night and be homeless. What she did was she contacted another friend who worked for an airlines who hooked her up with some tickets or a ticket, because for real, all the baby got to do is just sit in your lap, but a ticket to get her to L.A. Who was waiting for her in L.A. was the champs, meaning Coogee Raps, okay, old manager. She said that those two kept in touch. Kern girl, why? You have a whole lot of whole tendencies, Kern, because I don't understand why do you have so many relationships with his male friends. Yeah. So yeah. at the time, Chuck was the head of artists for uh, Dr. Dre's Aftermath. Okay. When she got to LA, Chuck, the manager, or the ex-manager, picked the two, Bina Kern and her son, Naeem, up from the airport, okay? Chuck allowed them to stay at his apartment temporarily. So anyway, one night, Chuck encouraged Corinne to go out, okay? He called one of his friends. She didn't say whether it was a male or female, but he called one of his friends to take her out for a night on the town. First question I'm thinking is, where the hell is the baby, okay? Because you don't know Chuck like that, girl. You don't know him like that. All you know is that that is the champ's ex-manager, okay? I mean, girl, but... That's just one more red flag in regards to her mother and child, but I'm going to have another for you. Okay. said that when she got to the club, she kind of felt awkward, but men were still reaching for her. Girl, don't be impressed. Men will reach for a dog at the end of the night. Girl, don't you know the closer you get to the end of the night, the more them niggas start grabbing, okay? Don't you know that as soon as the lights come on, them niggas go for a mad dash to whoever is there? She said she rejected most of them. The only one that she paid any attention to or gave the time of day to was uh, the dude Marquise from the Two Live Crew. Girl, I already see you, girl. You know, well. Anyway, what she said was she gave Marquise her number and she said that she would um, give him a call the next day. Okay. Now, she took that lightly, because don't forget, she used to be old stripper down there to the Arizona, and she is used, used, but she is used to having, uh, let's say, celebrity-like people being interested in her, okay? But it's just funny to me that the rest of them niggas was, you know, no. But as soon as Marquise came along, you was like, yes, I'll take your number and I'll call you tomorrow. She didn't seem enthused about it, but... You know, I just found it that, okay, so a celebrity hit you, so you like, okay, let me vibe with him. Next, okay. she noticed a man standing in the distance. She was smitten. She was enamored with this man who had a hat on and some Susie Q's hanging out his hat. He had a walking stick, 
Okay, I'm saying to myself, oh Lord, this bitch here. But he was surrounded by women. They all were enamored with him. Mm -hmm. And so was she. Turned around, it was rapper, actor, Ice T. Bitch, didn't you forget one adjective? You forgot to add in pimp, right? You forgot to add in pimp because not only is he a rapper, not only is he an actor, but the motherfucker was a pimp too. Okay, but you I, it's a reason for this. But I'm looking at you sideways, though, because you ain't giving us the full information. That's part of the reason why I'm like, girl, you think a lot of people are dumb reading this book, you know. But Cor Corinne Stephens comes off as the type of person that thinks she's smarter than everybody and that she knows everything. Virgo. My wife is a Virgo. 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 So now it's time to go. She returned to Chuck's apartment, and she has made it up in her mind that L.A. is the place to be. I need to be next to Ice T, okay? Where he is, I want to be with him. As promised, she called Marquis. She started singing her sad song to him. I want y'all to see how this unfolds, because I don't need you bitches to be dumb. I need everybody in my book club that is in earshot of me to pay attention, okay? Because, yeah, just pay attention. So, She's on the phone with Marquis. She's singing her song, okay? Marquis stops her abruptly and says, I have somebody who can help you. Now, remember this. She's broke. She don't have no partner. She got a child. She is lost. Okay? Lost. Marquis says, I'm going to call you back. Okay? I want you to hook up with this person who I know can help you. Do you see the vid coming? Okay? Pay attention, ladies. You know. Pay attention. Within 20 minutes, Marquise calls her back. There's a third person on the phone. It's Ice-T. So Marquise tells Yazette, now she barely knows this nigga, okay? Barely, all right? I need you to pay attention to all the signs, girls. Pay attention. They doing a whole group the child on here, okay? Basically, Marquise is handing him or handing her to Ice-T. Pay attention, okay? So Marquise is saying, I explained to him your situation, but here he is. You can explain or expound more than I can, okay? Because it ain't my goddamn story, okay? But what Yazette slash Kern said was that uh, they talked on the phone a little longer, and then uh, Ice-T gave Yazette his phone number. And remember, she's staying with Chuck, Coogee Raps, ex-manager. Now, Chuck is fitting to move into his house, so... When the moving trucks came up, she knew that it was time for her to go, so she stayed at a hotel. Well, she checked her and her son in at a hotel. She said no sooner than she dropped her bags in the room, Ice-T was at the door. Corinne says that when Ice-T got to the hotel, there was no loving, no sexy time. It was just talking. You know why, girl? Because pimps don't want your pussy. They want you to sell your pussy, okay? They may get it here and there, but they need you to give it to somebody else. Not like I said, when you trust men or too many men like that, this is the type of shit that happened. Bitches, you bitches that be like, oh, I just only have men friends. Bitches, this is the type of shit that happened to you, okay? When you be like, oh, I only have men friends, and you think that's something, proud, something to be proud of. Bitch, them niggas plotting on you. She said that Ice-T gave her $300 and assured her that if... She needed anything that she was to turn to him. She said with Ice-T's security in mind, she felt good enough to return to Phoenix. So when she went back to Phoenix, she felt very secure with knowing that Ice-T had her back. She was there for about 10 months. In those 10 months, she gained a place to stay. She got a little Nissan Sentra, and she took a nurse's aid course and quickly got a job. She said eventually, though, she ended up being um, a part, an apartment leasing consultant. She said that her baby father, G, had downgraded from the home and now living in an apartment with his girlfriend, Ashley. Okay? He was also spending goo gobs of money, not my words, her words, on juries. Okay? And wasn't giving Lil G, yeah, the baby name ain't Lil G, he wasn't giving Naeem nothing. She called Ice-T with updates and sent her money you know, giving her moral and financial support. And she felt good because she no longer needed the champ. Now, this is my thing, okay, girl? 
I'm just going to be blunt. You done sold some pussy for iced tea. All that you saying, for all you green women, let me just put it out there. She was selling herself for iced tea. Now, that's not in the book, okay? But there is no way that you're affiliating yourself with a pimp and they're giving you money and you're not doing something for them. Them pimps have a different way of thinking, okay? Everybody is a dollar to them. So in the phone call, Ice T also told her, uh, Yazette, you need to leave Arizona. There's nothing there for you, okay? I'm giving you all this money to stay there, but how can you grow if you're in that place? You need to come back to LA. She knew that. She knew that. She just didn't know how she was going to do it. Hold tight. Now, all the while, Yazette is feeling smothered by her son. She's actually upset at the fact that she has this baby that she begged God to give her, okay, in the bathroom that day. But she has this baby, and Coogee Rap can do whatever it is he want to do in life. So she made a decision. She said she regret the decision, but she made a decision. Yazette said in order for her to be successful, she knew that she had to leave her baby with G. G was an abusive man, but he would never hurt his child. How you know that, girl? How, you, how do you know that? Do you have secret, you know, cameras everywhere? How do you know that, girl? How do you know? That motherfucker didn't even care about his first birthday. But you would think he'll care enough to take care of his son? So what the hussy ended up doing was she made a nasty, trifling move, okay? I hate this. And I know some people be like, what do you expect for me to do, Nay? I don't know, but not drop your baby off with a nigga that you know whoop ass. Okay, but anyway, let me expound. So uh, what happened was one day she drove to Coogee Rap's apartment complex. She waited. When she saw Coogee Rap and his friend fitting to drive out of the parking lot of the apartment complex, she teed him, okay? So he couldn't go forward. The next minute you know, she jumps out the car, grabs the baby's car seat, Lil Naeem in the car seat, you know, he don't know what the hell is going on, and a bag that she packed for the baby. Drop the baby, and the bag off right in front of the car, okay? Then she hopped back in the car and drove six hours till she seen Hollywood City Lights. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to my success here on the YouTube. And remember this, the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves. Have a good one.